On today's show, Rockets Spurs preseason preview, the first of two matchups between these teams here in the preseason. Now, Jalen Green will not be in the lineup for this first game. So how does the offense change for the Rockets without Jalen Green? How much more Fred Van Vliet and Alper and Shingun can we expect to see in this game against San Antonio? And then who is the player most likely to step into that starting lineup to replace Jalen Green? It's all coming up right here at Locked on Rockets. This is Mission Control, Houston. Ignition sequence start. Throw it up to Jalen Green. Shingun here in the short row. Oh, my, that's the no look. Jabari for three on the win. Yeah! Look at Tari Eason. Here comes Tari. No! T-minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. The Houston Rockets select Amen Thompson and Cam Whitmore. One thing I have never done is not made the playoffs, and so we want to take that step here as well. Six. Five, four, three, two, one. What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. As always, I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, native Houstonian and credentialed media member. I'm also the host of Locked on NBA Mondays. Be sure to follow along on Twitter at JT Gatlin. The show, of course, at Locked on Rockets, free and available wherever you listen to your podcast. Now, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on NBA for $20 off your first purchase. And as always, thank you so much for making Locked on Rockets part of your day every single day, whether it's on the way to work, on your lunch break, in the gym. Thank you for making LOR part of your day every single day. Joining us now is your weekly co-host, Madison Moore. You can track down on Twitter at Madman Leaks. Here as we start off week two of Houston Rockets preseason basketball. So far, one of the few undefeated teams in the association. This is our championship. This is our playoffs, Madison. Actually, no, we can't even say that anymore. We can't, we can't make these jokes anymore. Those are phase one jokes. This yeah. is a team that has legit playoff aspirations. So we gotta get, we gotta get, we gotta break the old mentality, the bad habits, just like Emay's breaking the bad habits with these with the current players on this team. We got to break out of our old podcasting habits, our old jokes, all that good stuff. Um, look, we got a lot to get to in today's show. Uh, a little bit of a Rockets Spurs preview as we get ready for these back-to-back -back games upcoming here in San Antonio. Uh, kind of some of the things that we'd like to still still see out of this team uh, across their remaining preseason games, some matchup expectations, uh, certain key matchups to watch out for against the Spurs. And where we're going to start right here off the top is, unfortunately, we're going to have to wait a little bit longer to see Victor Wembanyama take on the Houston Rockets because at least for this first matchup in San Antonio, Spurs are going to be uh, having a few players sit out. It'll be Devin Vassell, Trey Jones, and Wemby will all be uh, sitting out of this first of two matchups against the Spurs. And then on the Rockets side of things, Jalen Green will also be sitting out with what Ime Odoka has chosen to call a toenail problem. And I need y'all to understand that the moment Ime uttered those words, and I knew I was going to have to send the tweet afterwards to let every Rockets fan know that Jalen wouldn't be playing for that reason, I could see the jokes already being written on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, Madison. I didn't. I almost didn't want to hit send tweet. And sure enough, a few hours later, I go back into my mentions, and I'm like, oh, man. Did he paint, did he paint his toenail too hard? <laughs> like what it, like all this, all this stuff. And I just feel bad because it's probably just like an ingrown nail or something like that is really like annoying to deal with. It's, it's a legitimate thing, but Rockets fans have, have no chill whatsoever. Yeah, man. I, when you said that, I'm like, I literally never heard anyone say <laughs> a toenail issue, but I remember when I used to hoop a lot every day, like when, you know what I'm saying? When I was in high school and stuff, like sometimes when I stopped, the pressure hitting against my toenail will cause like my toe, like you, you get like those blood spots in your toenails Ooh, and they yeah. really er erode. So I'm like, maybe it's just like, <laughs> you know, some irritation for, from that. Cause Jalen is so fast. He beats guys. So stopping and starting. So maybe it's just some of that. And really it seems not serious at all. And, you know, he said, they said the starters would get breaks. So hopefully we just, you know, He'll be back for the win the uh, second Wimby match. Yeah, maybe maybe this will well. What we hope is the second Wimby match. Look, if Wimby oh, tries to duck both Rockets games in preseason, uh, all it's going to do is build up the immeasurable amount of hype going into their meetup in the second game of the regular season for the Rockets, uh, that early road game in San Antonio after they play the Magic for their season opener in Orlando. I mean, there's going to be a lot of hype going into that game, but even more so 
if they don't actually get a look at Wimby here in either of the two preseason games. So that's a little disappointing. I was looking forward to getting my first chance to see uh, Wimby, Rockets, Spurs, all that up close and personal for these couple couple games. TBD on whether or not anybody misses any games uh, for the second of these uh, Rocket Spurs games. Everybody else on the roster is apparently healthy, ready, and good to go. Uh, the other guy that, I, you know, as far as injury concerns go is Jock Landale. And we did get, you know, the update. He'll he'll be going with the team to San Antonio. Um, and, you know, he talked about rehabbing this injury when he spoke to us after practice on Saturday. And I do think that there's a level of, like, Jock has never had an injury like this in his career, is what he said. Mm -hmm. And so he's never gone through the rehab process. And he's put a lot of time and a lot of work over these last seven weeks into getting trying to get his ankle back to a place where, you know, he's comfortable with it. And I think there was, like, a distinct level of he just wasn't as comfortable as he normally is, wasn't as explosive as he normally is when he played that first preseason game against the Pacers. So he's going to be a guy that I'm really kind of paying attention to against the Spurs. How does he look physically, right, as he's coming along this rehab process? Yeah, I mean, I think the that, you know, in injuries can be tricky. We just watched Jay Sean Tate uh, go through that all last year. I mean, they can be lingering if you don't get them right. Um, but I also wondered, could there be some alternative going on with uh, a battle for the backup uh center uh spot with him and Jeff Green a lot of a lot of coaches in the past during the preseason they opted to not play players uh in certain games and let another player so I, I'm explaining this terribly but if the first game uh Jock, Jeff Green did not play but Jock Landale got all of those center center backup minutes so you get a a, a full game of what you've seen what he looks like at backup center and then the second game Jeff Green got all of those minutes right and you get to see what a full game looks like what a lineup looks like with these two different conversing styles of a of, of backup center and I was wondering if Emma Udoka maybe just imploring a little bit of that um, trying to see well, who, what looks that he does he get better, and is it's better than just shortening both of their minutes and having them play in the same game if that makes it makes sense. No, it, and that makes perfect sense, right? That's what preseason is for. It's for the experimentation. Yeah, sure. It's for testing different things out. So maybe that would have happened regardless, but you know, it just so happened that Jock did not travel with the team to Birmingham, so he stayed back in Houston, and so that was kind of one of the questions for Ime is, hey, is, is Jock going to travel to San Antonio, right? Or is he sticking back yeah. around and staying in Houston to continue working on that ankle? But um, you know, going from the Pacers game to then not traveling to Birmingham, he will be traveling on this upcoming trip to San Antonio. So keeping an eye on him and kind of what he is able to bring to the table for the Rockets in this upcoming game uh, should be a lot of fun. And hopefully we'll, you know, again, monitoring that injury progress, wanting him to see see him get back to 100% where we know he can be. But coming up, we want to get into some of the expectations for this Rockets Spurs game with no Jalen Green, no Victor Wiminyama. How does the offense change without Jalen Green in the lineup? Which guard on the roster gets the nod to take over that starting spot in place of Jalen Green. Also, how does Amin Thompson fit in with the rest of the Houston Rockets starters? All that and so much more coming up here in just one moment. First, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Look, you shouldn't have to worry when you're trying to buy tickets to go out and have a good time, right? I remember a couple years back, I was using a ticketing app. I'm out there, I'm filling out all the information, and I get to the end, I'm trying to purchase the tickets, and then it won't load, right? It's it's freaking out, and I hit submit, and then all the information just disappears, and it's such it can be such a headache to go through some of these other apps. That's where Game Time steps in. You can take the guesswork out of your ticket buying experience. They've got killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game Time takes all the guesswork out of buying your tickets. It's such a simple and easy app to navigate. You can quickly get last minute tickets, flash deals, find and buy tickets for every kind of event happening in your area. You got to check them out. Go check out Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code locked on MBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on MBA. That's L O C K E D O N. NBA at checkout for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. 
and continuing on here at Locked On Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. Madison and I just, you know, have some tomfoolery going on in between the segments here at Locked On Rockets because as we were joking behind the, you know, behind the scenes, whatever, uh, we are also in preseason form as podcasters, as fanalists, as people who cover the team, media members, whatever. Uh, not quite in midseason form just yet here at Locked On Rockets, but I promise you, listeners, we will get there. We'll get there together. All right. This is a, it takes a village. This is a collaborative effort. All right, Madison, we know that there's going to be no Jalen green in this game. And so that gives us two very important storylines for this first of two rocket Spurs meetings. Uh, the first of which who steps into the starting lineup in place of Jalen green. And then the second of which, how does the offense change without Jalen green? And so I think that takes us on two very distinctly different paths. Mm -hmm. Uh, which one do you want to tackle first? Who we think replaces Jalen as a starter versus, um, how the offense changes without Jalen in the lineup at all. I think we'll, we should go replaces as the starter. And then that'll inform us how the offense may change with that person as the starter. Perfect. And for me, I think there's two primary candidates. Okay. Um, The first of which, which I think is the most likely, is Amon Thompson. I think Amon Thompson entering to the starting lineup, we we can clearly see he's the Rockets' sixth man off the bench. Um, And you could move Fred Van Vliet over to the two guard or vice versa, especially with Amon's new mechanics, improved mechanics. We might want to see him get up a, a couple more shots as well. And the other option I was thinking, um, shot in the dark option, um, a lot of times coaches don't want to um, mess up their lineups, the the flow of their lineups. So a lot of times they may start a guy who may not be getting as much minutes just to preserve his their lineups. And if, if they do that, I think Cam Whitmore is a prime candidate to start in that position. We get to see what Cam looks like with the starters. Give him some give him some minutes in there, and I think it's a it's an opportunity that Cam uh, needs to seize if he does get that opportunity as well. And I think he fits in perfectly at the two guard uh, in the in the lineup with the starters. Um, whichever two it is, I think it's going to be fun to see regardless. What do you think about that? I know I, I love your point about kind of trying to plug in a guy who's not going to mess up the rest of your rotations, right? Because right. if you like the 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 common can or the, the common sense candidate is Amin Thompson, but then how does that mess up everything in, in the sense mm-hmm. of, okay, it's very clear. Ime has been very uh, intentional about his rotation pattern with his three guards, at least through the first half of these first two preseason games with Fred Jalen and Amin kind of staggering two of the three of those guys at pretty much all times, that kind of thing. So that kind of messes things up if you throw him in into the starting lineup because then you don't have that ability to stagger even just one of those two guys at all times right. between Fred and Amin. How do you factor Cam into that when you, you know, because they have been using Jalen as a bit of a ball handler at times, kind of initiating some actions mm-hmm. uh, in the two-man game with Alper and Shingun. That's not necessarily something that I think Alper and Shingun and Cam Whitmore are at yet as a duo. They're not going to be doing that a lot. So that would change the offense quite a bit if you, inserted cam because then a lot of it becomes relying on fred and al p in that starting lineup to generate the offense as well as getting jabari those looks that we've been seeing him get as far as him going off the dribble him getting the ball in the post that kind of thing but i do think from just a i think if he wants to get a better look at some of the other starters and kind of seeing how many actions he can run through them cam makes a lot of sense because then he basically just goes out there as a spot-up shooter stay in your lane do your job exactly but if you put a men out there, then I think it tr- it completely changes things to where you're going to get a really good look at a men running a lot of the offense right out of the gate because then Fred slides naturally into that off guard or off ball role, off guard role where he becomes the, the floor spacer, the catch and shoot presence, all of that, because it does get a little clunky out there when you've got the two non shooters in a men and Alper and Shingun. Mm-hmm. Uh, which Alpi has been given the green light to shoot the ball. We know that. And we know that he's still struggling and passing on some shots, but a man has also been given the green light to shoot the ball. So maybe the spacing isn't as much of a concern with Ime Odoka as it is with, you know, some Rockets fans. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think both sides make great points uh, for the Rockets, but one of the things that I do think matters though, as we talk about Jalen LP and Fred as the Rockets three primary initiators, especially in the starting lineup. But if we take Amon out of, out of the bench, 
who begins to initiate offense for the bench lineup as well. Like the, you got to think about that type of balance as well. And we know Amon won't be starting in the regular season and these preseason games are to get guys ready, but he will be playing a lot of minutes next to Fred Van Vliet. So it might be worth getting his chemistry right with Fred Van Vliet when both of them on the floor. I think both are, are stellar options for the Rockets, but just because Cam has been shooting the ball so well, um, and has kind of played so well in the preseason so far. I'd really like to see how he looked with the starters. I'd like to see him get some of those minutes. And um, and But both of them are going to get minutes with Jalen being out because that's, you know, 20, 28, you know, preseason mi- minutes that have been freed up. So we'll probably get uh, some lineups with all of them. But that I think that leads us into how this offense may change with Jalen out. I, and, I do also want to say, as a dark horse ahead. candidate for who might actually step into that starting role, uh, Reggie Bullock, along the same exactly. lines as right. what you suggested with Cam, Reggie's not going to be a guy who's getting like, you know, a mountain of staple, you know, stable, consistent rotation minutes. He's going to be a guy you plug in in certain situations, kind of an added value veteran depth piece for this Rockets team, the three staple bench pieces that we know are going to get consistent run, right, are Amin, Jay Sean Tate, and Tari Eason. Those three are a lock. Those are like your first three guys off the bench in any, in whatever order. There's obviously the ongoing battle for the backup big spot with Jock Landale and Jeff Green. So I think you can get away the same thing that we talked about with starting Cam Whitmore. You start Reggie Bullock, let him get a little bit of run with the starters, and then it doesn't necessarily mess up your substitution patterns, which again, Ime's been very intentional about Amin Thompson being the first guy off the bench for six halves of basketball now. Sorry, not six halves of basketball, three and three halves of basketball. Math is hard. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think that's perfectly. I did think about Reggie Bullock as, as also a dark horse candidate, and he's a guy who just knows his job. He's going to defend and stretch the floor. It's what you need in the offense. And I think if this was the regular season and he wanted to go that option, Reggie Bullock would be the starter. But maybe since it's the preseason and you have the room to kind of play around, I would hope it'd be Cam. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Cam, Cam Whitmore would be maybe the more fun option. There's a lot yeah, of Rockets fun. fans who are who Man, are very fun. bought into Cam Whitmore already right out of the gate. You know, as far as other things to look at for this this Spurs game, you know, you you wanted to we were kind of segueing it back into how the offense changes a little bit. You know, right. I do think that looking at it from the reps that are going to be taken out of Jalen's hands, him not being in this game, I think it gives us another look at how comfortable this Rockets offense is with so many different guys who can be kind of the number one option on any given night, right? Do we see an uptick in Jabari's usage, right? Does Shingun get a few more post-up opportunities? Maybe we see a little bit more action for Fred and Dylan offensively than we did last game. Um, against the New Orleans Pelicans. They took a bit more of that kind of backseat offensively to Jalen, Jabari, and Shingun, which was some of the expectations coming into the season, right? Is how do those two veteran pieces in Fred and Dylan kind of respond to being the vets in a lineup with a bunch of 20 and 21-year-olds, right? Do they take a backseat willingly or do we see them kind of overstep more as like, hey, no, I'm the veteran. I'm going to get my shots. And so far that hasn't been the case. Yeah, no, it's it's been a revelation, and honestly, I think that's what M.A. Udoka's job is, is to be clear about the roles he, will, he wants for these guys, including the veterans, and it seems like everything we hoped would happen, best case scenario with these guys being mentorships, uh, being incredible mentors, excuse me, to take these young guys under the wing, but still allow them to grow in their games, and which leads to how the offense may change Will, will they allow Jabari to also continue to grow in his game as he has been the undisputed best player for the Rockets this uh, preseason with with Jalen out of the lineup? Do we get to see Jabari initiate the offense more? And that is what I'm really excited to see for him to take a step and really get get to put his fingerprints on and uh, on the game. Um, early on and throughout the game as a main focal point the way Jalen has. So a lot of the way the the offense has run, even though Jalen, like in the in the, the New Orleans game, did not initiate as much, a lot of his, the off-ball actions were meant for Jalen, which drew a lot of attention, which allowed for Jabari to get going and other guys to get going. And with that attention no longer on the floor, I wonder how will this offense will run without – you know, that draw, that big, um, what I would have say, uh, the gravity that Jalen brings with him, right on the floor. And I want to, I want to see if we can see some of the ball handling, the, 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 the driving and isolation play as well as the passing from Jabari. That's what I'm hoping to see. 
And, and I think the, the, there, again, there's a di- couple different directions you can go with to try and replace that gravity from Jalen. Nobody else on this Rockets roster has the level of gravity he does as that kind of elite athlete, somebody who can no, cut back cool. door, but also be a threat, you know, to pull up from the perimeter, kind of a play finisher at all three levels on the floor. Um, I do think, again, that's why I lean more towards, you know, a guy with, you know, some shooting prowess a little bit. You know, I think the the conventional it's wisdom gives you a Min Thompson, right? But that's that's why it's going to be such a different look. And so mm-hmm. that gives us a chance to kind of discuss how a Min Thompson has looked with the starting unit, right? We saw him replace Fred Van Vliet for the second mm-hmm. half of basketball in that Pelicans game. Uh, we've seen him as the first sub off the bench, which means he's been running in a lineup that features basically him and the other starters minus Jalen already. Uh, so what have we learned from those lineups? What does Ime Odoka think about those lineups? Lineups with Amin Thompson running with the ones uh, we heard from him at Rockets practice the other day. We're going to get to all of that and a couple more things here in our final segment. First, today's episode is brought to you by Better Help. Do you ever maybe feel like your brain is getting in its own way? Maybe everything's going great in your life, but late at night you're laying in bed and your thoughts are racing and you're overanalyzing or getting anxious about certain things going on in your day to day. Therapy can help you figure out what's holding you back, what you're struggling with, so that you can work for yourself instead of against yourself. I've done therapy in the past, and it's an incredibly kind of freeing experience to have a licensed professional who understands how to maybe tackle some of these problems that you don't by yourself, kind of guide you and walk you through how to become the best version of yourself. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash NBA today to get 10% off your very first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnNBA. And final segment here at Locked On Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. Now, as we dive in here discussing what we think is going to be the Houston Rockets starting lineup versus the San Antonio Spurs, Fred Van Vliet, Amin Thompson, Dylan Brooks, Jabari Smith Jr., and Alperin Shingoon. We actually got the chance to ask and hear Emi Odoka's thoughts on what Amin Thompson has done specifically so far that's given him the confidence to let him get so much run with kind of that first unit for the Houston Rockets to this point. Yeah, he's obviously you know, the, the, on offense, the pace and the force that he plays with, he changes the game as far as that. But defensively, his size alone, he covers a lot of bases. And so you can play him with several different combinations, smaller guards, bigger guys. And, you know, he's, he's able to switch and guard bigger guys as well. So, um, you know, like I said, he's a, his size and versatility on defense is a benefit. And we feel comfortable with him playing with uh, several different lineups. Okay, Madison, so hearing from Coach Ime about kind of what a man brings to the table and the question, the way we phrased it was specifically about, you know, defense. What does he bring to the table there? And he mentions, you know, a couple of different things, his size, his athleticism, you know, highlighting again, you know, things that we know about a man that he brings to the table, uh, mentions the switchability as one of the factors defensively and kind of how he's stood out so far on that side of the basketball. And again, he talks about having so much flexibility with different lineups and being able to plug him in and play him across multiple different positions. And I think that's, again, at least some of the main reasons as to why we've seen him get the reps that he's gotten so far. It goes back to training camp with Ime Odoka speaking so highly of Amin Thompson, you know, really being one of the standouts of Houston Rockets training camp. Uh, And I mean, it makes a lot of sense. He, you know, he didn't really shine, you know, put too much of a shine on his offensive repertoire, but I think he's also really handled himself in the minutes that he's been given on the floor as the primary ball handler. He's looked fantastic so far. Yeah, I mean, I think he's done a good job. I think he has, he's had definitely some rookie moments. I I won't lie. I think he's been a, a bit rusty, especially in that first game, but you can really uh, see his impact defensively, um, switching and really l- learning his place on the court. And one of the things that MA said, uh, Uh, before he talked about his defense is about him pushing the pace in the fast break. And I think that is all can be really ignited by the thing. I think he's done best so far is defensive rebounding. And I think he, he has the knack 
almost uh, Russell Westbrook-esque of grabbing the ball and, and keeping his head up and leading the break in that way, letting that, that defense, his switchability, his versatility lead to a, a great rebound and where he's already has the ball and can push the pace um, and really get this team out and running. And that's one of the things that I really think that he can, he can do and excel in day one. And I'm really excited to see if he, with the increased min, minutes load against the Spurs, if he'll be able to, um, to, kind of supercharge that in an even more robust way than we've seen so far. And, and from a spacing perspective, there are similarities in how you can utilize a Min Thompson as kind of a cutter, as a screener, right. uh, a guy who goes back door or whatever, similar to the way that they've done a few of those things with Jalen. It's just he doesn't quite have the shooting gravity that Jalen does. So do the Spurs just ignore him as a presence? Do they, you know, how how will the Spurs guard Amin Thompson versus Jalen Green if they try to run some of those similar actions? Or again, do we see the offense just completely turned on its head to where when Amin is out there on the floor, they play exclusively off of him, right? Put the ball in his hands, let him run some two-man game with Alper and Shingoon, let Fred Van Vliet be the floor spacer, all of that. I... I don't know which approach they're going to go with initially. I'm sure we'll see both sides of that coin, you know, in the game. Uh, I just, he's, he's been so willing to take those outside shots. We had a, we had a listener kind of ask us the question of whether or not we think there's a world where if, if a man is showing so much confidence shooting the basketball, is there a world where he actually manages to be a greater than 30% three point shooter this season? I think that's easily a possibility at Rockets practice yeah. on Sunday afternoon uh, at the end of practice after talking to coach Ime, but before we actually talk to Alper and Shingun, which stay tuned because we've got a little bit of a, a blooper reel courtesy of yours truly here coming up shortly. Um, so don't want to miss out on that. Uh, but uh, we did get to see a Min Thompson getting in some work with uh, shooting coach Ben Sullivan, and it's interesting some of the shooting drills that they have him doing, uh, kind of just working on his touch and everything from the perimeter. They were doing a shooting drill where they put a Min Thompson in the in both corners, and he was actually taking what looked like one-handed floaters from the corner with both hands. Um, so he was basically like like you know one leg knee you know knee high. Uh, t- you know, taking off like he was doing like a teardrop floater in the lane, but all the way from the three from the three point line in the corners. I don't know what benefit that shooting drill has versus you know doing it uh, you know traditional style, doing other things. But it's just a bit of a glimpse behind the curtain, right, as to some of the different things that the Rockets are doing to get a men more comfortable. Whether it's with quickness of release, whether it's just understanding his touch on the basketball, whatever it is. They're clearly working on making him a more comfortable shooter, and the confidence that he, ha- that he has in his overall game, his ability to drive, his ability to uh, dish out wild assists to his teammates, I think that confidence is already kind of spilling into his shot because he has not been reserved or shy about shooting the basketball at all to this point. Yeah, I mean, I think the me- the improved mechanics on his jump shot is a revelation. It completely changes to the trajectory of his shooting moving forward. And one of the things that really had me down on his evaluation as a shooter is the actual touch on that jump shot, it, uh, whether it be a free throw or a three pointer, right? It, there was, there was absolutely terrible touch on his jump shooting coming out from OTE. And it's so interesting hearing you talk about the things that they're doing to improve the touch on his jump shot, which is a, which was a major issue. And I'm really excited this, I mean, the improved mechanics has already kind of vaulted him to a scoop level of prospect to, in my eyes now. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just, it's it's really interesting to see the things that they're doing to get that jump shot right. And I, I don't think he, I don't think he's fearless at all. He looks comfortable shooting as well. And so that's, you know, a really, a really good thing for Rockets fans. We, we might really have a, a, a superstar in the making on our hands. A couple other connections here from this uh, Rockets Spurs matchup heading into the first one. Don't know if Keldon Johnson it will also be whether he's out or also available for the Spurs. Uh, I think he's yeah, I think he's supposed to play, which is disappointing because you know going into it, you know I was excited to really discuss you know I, and and maybe we'll get this discussion or not going into game two of this series, but you know I think it's such an interesting element just. You know, and we're going to have to revisit it further down the line. We will definitely revisit it going into the first matchup of the season, but it's something to at least consider, keep in the in the back of your mind, is the Spurs projected starters, right? Devin Vassell, Keldon Johnson, Jeremy Sohan, Wimby, and like Zach Collins. Mm-hmm. Um, do you put, if you're the Rockets down the line, do you consider putting 
do you just put Jabari Smith Jr. on Wimby and you try to match him size for size or length for length? Or do you throw the best defender on him and throw Dylan Brooks on Wimby Nyama, right? And you try to use a smaller, stronger wing defender to make Wimby's life hell. It's not really a topic that we'll have to worry about covering going into this game, but at least as far as some of these individual pieces work, keep an eye on how certain Rockets do defend the other players in this Spurs lineup, right? How does Shingun look defending Bassey or Collins out there on the floor? How do Fred and Amin look when they're guarding Keldon Johnson? Because these are matchups that are going to matter uh, a couple weeks from now when we do get into the regular season and the Rockets have to actually play, play the Spurs for reals for reals in that second game of the season. Uh, any other thoughts on this Rocket Spurs meeting? Anything that stands out that you're really hoping to see, Madison, out of this game? Well, I, not per se in this particular meeting, but I do have a conspiracy theory that we're seeing so many uh, players not play is because both teams don't want to kind of show their hands because we play each other so early in the season. So mm. they don't want to show too much of their hand, right? We're going to sit some of our starters down so you don't really – you can't really game plan for what we did in the preseason. I think that's great Popovich uh, type deal. And you know, Emma Yudoka is uh, up from the pop tree, so I'm <laughs> sure. They, I'm sure. I'm sure he said, "Oh, Wimby's not playing. We're gonna sit Jalen down as well." <laughs> oh my God, the toenail, the toenail news. This is like this is <laughs> like, like toenail, what? bro. Come on, <laughs> we got we got toenail gate. This is like you know <laughs> what? What is this? No, I, I lo- honestly, you know what? I love this conspiracy theory. I actually, now that I think about it, it it. It makes a lot of sense, right? Like, what are you going to do, right? Okay, well, we don't want to show them exactly what we're planning to do with Jalen. You know, so we'll sit Jalen. We'll still do some of the other stuff that we want to work on. But uh, that would actually be a hilarious turn of events if, like, Jalen actually sits and then maybe he pulls one of the other starters, like, last minute for rest or something tomorrow. Oh, man, that's – you got me You got me fired up for that, Madison. Yeah. Now I'm now I'm <laughs> excited for a different variety of reasons because maybe this is – maybe this is really Ime Odoka pulling, like, a pop move on his uh, – yeah. on, on his old uh, – old, old buddy old friend right i'm telling (laughs) you a little bit of a head coaching matchup obviously some connections there between you know ime and pop and you know all his time spent in san antonio as a player as a coach um we've also got again if shingu and zach collins get going at each other again this game uh remember the the poster that was not to be last season on you know zach collins by alper and shingu maybe he'll be able to you know get poster number 2.0 or what should be poster number 2.0 in this game because alp may not look it but he is a guy who loves to dunk on other guys and loves to get up and be really aggressive especially down low uh speaking of lp we've got to wrap up the show on a bit of a blooper note because we were at rockets practice sunday afternoon it was supposed to be a short practice because they needed to head out for San Antonio right afterwards and, you know, fly into town and get settled before shoot around in the game Monday, you know, to start the week off. And so we're doing practice and we're only talking to coach Ime and Alper and Shingun. And in my head, I think about how in the previous Rockets practice, I asked Jock Landale about, you know, what it's like playing against Alper and Shingun in practice. And he said, it's like going against Jokic. And he, he had a ton of praise for LP, what he brings to the table offensively, how he's progressed as a defender, um, you know, almost unprompted. And then I tried, I t- keyword tried. I tried to ask Alper and Shingun about that comment from uh, Jock Landale and what it meant to him. And, and here is how it went. So that's, that's all I'll give you right now. I said in practice yesterday that you that him guarding you in practice is a lot like guarding Nikola Jokic and we know about those comparisons between you and Jokic. So like when he's mean, in defense? Yeah, when he's on defense having to guard you. What does that mean to hear that from your teammate who sees you every day in practice that that's what you are, are playing like? Jackson, that was so much I'm going so on. <laughs> <laughs> you like change this up a couple times? I miss it. Can you ask me again, please? <laughs> Your kids pass, all this stuff, we like, bro. We don't need OG. Nah. OG's not going to understand that shit. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't understand. I'm sorry. Bad. No, that's my bad. Yeah, you're good. Oh, man, Madison. All right, look. So, clearly, I'm very much in my preseason form right now. Uh, just absolutely and utterly fumbling that question to Al P. Um, so, look, sometimes it happens, right? Sometimes you start a question and, or, like, the Michael Scott you know, clip, right? Sometimes I just start a sentence and hope I find myself along the way. And sometimes in those media scrums, you think of a sentence or you think of something you want to ask one of the players, like in the spur of the moment, rather than like prepping the questions beforehand or whatever. And that was one where I remembered what Jock had said from the previous practice near the end of the scrum. And so I was like, how do I piece this together into a, into a good enough question? And it just, 
I completely stumbled and bumbled my way along that question. And Alpi was such a nice, he was such a good sport about it. He was so nice. Uh, and we were even chopping it up afterwards after the camera, you know, had ended. And he goes, he goes, that was a Jonathan question. You know, mm-hmm. shout out to Houston Chronicle reporter, Jonathan Fagan, because Jonathan at times does kind of have a lot of build up to some of his questions where he'll be painting like this beautiful tapestry of what, you know, like a paragraph or two, a few sentences before he gets to the actual question. So we all had a good laugh about it in the end. Um, shout out to Alpi. He's just such a good kid. Yeah. And all I say to that, man, I thought it was a great moment, not just cause it was funny, but also cause Alpi's reaction is like, come on, Jackson, bro. Like, what, what are you doing here? <laughs> and it's so funny because that that's the type of reaction like we do with our friends. Like, you know what I mean? And it kind of just was like for a fan to see, you know, a media member and a player kind of be on first name basis and, and just be cool about it. You know what I mean? It really is like, man, you know, Jackson must really uh be building relationships beyond ball out there because <laughs> the way he responded – only a homie could call you out like that. <laughs> hey, I will say, look, when he walked up to the huddle, he gave me and Chris Gardner, who also does amazing work covering everything basketball happening in the, in the city of Houston. He walked up and gave us both a big you know, hug around the shoulders before we even started the media session. He goes, what's up, guys? How are you doing? He's, he's always so friendly, so kind to us. Uh, and, and again, he's done, he's done a phenomenal job you know, in these two years learning English and getting comfortable enough to do uh, media availabilities with us without his translator, which is why at one point in his reply, as we're all laughing, you know, at my, at my idiocy and how I tried to ask that question at one point, somebody's like, do we need to go get OG? And his reply, OG's not going to understand that shit. Like that was, <laughs> that was so bad. Oh man. We had, it's, uh, it was, it was a fun this little moment. I, I couldn't not share that with you guys. Like, I'm not going to sit here and like scrub that and be like, Oh my God, it's so embarrassing for me. Like, no, it's, <laughs> It's a good moment. I'm cool with, you know, it, it's, it's the Rockets have a lot of really good, good personalities on this team. A lot of good guys, good characters. Um, so it's just fun to be able to kind of see a bit more of the human element from these guys at times too. So with that, Madison, any final thoughts before we shut this thing down? No, I'm good. Just follow me at, at Madman Leaks, man. I'll, and y'all can interact with me there. That's going to do it for another edition of Locked on Rockets. As always, thank you so much for checking out the show. If you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing wherever you listen to your podcasts or on YouTube. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And we look forward to having you back right here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball.